In both physical and legendary form, the elephant has been an intricate part of Thai culture for thousands of years. In the service of man, the elephant has dragged logs, brought countless travelers safely through treacherous terrain, and fought in epic battles. Thailand's most sacred temples are decorated with elephants, and the rare white elephant is still worshipped as a living divinity. But the Thai elephant today is endangered in the wild, and those elephants in captivity are often abused. They are fed the improper diet and lack veterinary care. Elephants are brought into Bangkok to wander the streets and perform for money. Animal rights activists denounce these cruel practices and demand the release of these elephants. But sadly, natural forests have disappeared to the point where there is no longer space to release them. Many people in the West think that all elephants are gentle, loving creatures, but uh, it just isn't so. Many of them are. Uh, but for the elephant behind me, for example, has killed three people. I mean, the danger is twofold, actually, in that uh, uh, humans who have elephants that are, are raiding their crops uh, might shoot them with a homemade shotgun. In Sri Lanka, for example, you'll find an awful lot of blind elephants from, from homemade shotguns. Uh, but they might also poison the elephant. There are even cases of uh, elephants getting electrocuted. And then the danger goes the other way around, too, uh, that they can, they can kill humans. The Thai elephant today is thus a symbol of past power and splendor, and, at the same time, an urgent national problem. The problem worsened in the year 1990, when the traditional job of elephants in captivity in Thailand, logging, was banned. Thousands of elephants became unemployed. Keepers were forced to find different ways to earn money, and so the elephants, just like many Thai people, now depend on tourism. The Lampang Thai Elephant Conservation Center puts on an eco-friendly show to raise money for the care of the elephants. Other special events have raised funds for the center, such as Thailand's first elephant polo tournament, held at the Hua Hin Resort area south of Bangkok in September 2001. The elephant contributes a lot to the tourist economy. Uh, the elephants actually enjoy this, this game. They, it's a herd game. They really enjoy being together. Um, and I think that it can't be anything but good for the future. Richard Lair has come up with another novel way to raise money for his conservation center, and in so doing, has perhaps created a new art form, elephant music. The elephants enjoy making music, but some of them more than others, just as with humans. I mean, we have our drummer, uh, Luke Gope and Pratida are actually both quite good, and they both enjoy it. Luke Pong is just a genius, moving his body and finding new angles. Endless ambitions for this orchestra, but where do you go when you've got the largest uh, band in the world? I mean, I don't know how many tons we count up. Uh, but no, we're constantly adding new instruments. The first CD had six elephants. The second CD is going to have 12 elephants. I want to do an elephonic version of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Uh, and then just more and more just beautiful music. The elephants at the camp also help take care of their human keepers. An innovative biogas plant that turns elephant dung into electricity and gas for cooking. Although Thai elephants in captivity have little hope to be returned to the wild, perhaps in camps like these, 
they and their handlers can live a contented, synergistic existence. Future in Chains explores the richness of the elephant's contribution to Thai cultural life and lore, and examines the very serious problems facing Thai elephants, who are fated to live out their lives in captivity. In an ideal world, all of these elephants would go back into the wild. I mean, if, if there was a button on the wall that you could press and they'd, they'd go off into pristine forests, I wouldn't think about it for a minute. 